Welcome to the All Around Adventure Podcast. The show where you hear amazing tales from afar and the all-important life lessons that go along with them. Here's your host, Josh Guerrero. What is going on, everyone? My name is Josh Guerrero, and I'm the host and founder of this podcast, which is simply titled The All Around Adventure Podcast. Whether you're joining me for the first time or if you've been listening for a while now, I certainly do want to welcome you here. And as always, I want to thank you for being here today. I know you're busy. I know you got a lot going on, and there's so much out there on the internet these days that's trying to get your attention and distract you. But it just means so much to me that you've chosen to download and listen to this podcast. Now, if you are, in fact, new to this podcast, like what was mentioned in my fancy new intro, I'm still really digging that intro. This is the show where you hear amazing tales from afar and get the all important life lessons that go along with them. And those will be travel stories from myself as well as a fantastic guest that I welcome on this podcast. And I am just talking with travelers of all kinds on this show. I am talking with warriors, entrepreneurs, digital nomads, best-selling authors, bloggers, adventurers, philanthropists, you name it. If they have a fantastic travel story to tell with some great life lessons to share, it's my job to seek them out and bring them on this podcast and extract their stories and life lessons through powerful conversations to help you level up in your life. And I have a fantastic guest joining me today. For today, I'll be talking with world traveler and entrepreneur, Wen Mwenyi. Wen is the founder and CEO of Herculean, which is an innovative clothing company that produces self-cleaning clothes for both travelers and everyday people alike. Though prior to becoming an entrepreneur, Wen's story begins in Cameroon, where he grew up, and after being encouraged by his mother, he made his way out into the world and began traveling, and since then, he's covered a lot of ground, and now he currently resides in Minnesota. Though along the way, Wen noticed a problem, and that is that the clothes that he was traveling with quickly got dirty, they started smelling, and laundry facilities were hard to come by. So to address this problem, he started looking for ways to design clothes that could be self-cleaning. And I'll let him tell tell about that in his own words, how he went about achieving that, but it is quite impressive. And that is what led to the creation of Herculean. So in this episode, he's going to share that story with us today. And we also talk about the value of traveling light and the benefits that we can gain from that. So So yeah, let's go ahead and get right on into this because we got some great stuff to cover today. I think you all are really going to enjoy this episode. So without further ado, this is my conversation with Wen Mwenyi. All right, here we go, everyone. Another awesome episode of the All Around Adventure podcast. My guest today is Wen Mwenyi, who is the founder and CEO of Herculeon. Wen, what's going on, man? Thanks so much for taking the time for joining me today and welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be on the show. Yeah, I've been uh, looking forward to getting you on here. You know, I just kind of sort of uh, learned about you a little bit recently and come to find that you've covered a lot of ground uh, as a traveler. You're originally from uh, Central Africa and Cameroon, but you've found your way um, to many places around the world. And now you are in uh, Minnesota, (laughs) of, of all places. So I'm certainly looking forward to hearing about your journey thus far. Yeah, I mean, it's what a what a move from um, Cameroon to Minnesota. It's very very different, but yeah, we've we've made a, a quite a journey in life so far. Yeah, and I, I as you and I were sort of talking about before we hit record here. You know, I imagine uh, Cameroon is pretty warm year round. You're kind of just um, along the equator there, but now uh, we're kind of getting into late autumn, and up in Minnesota, I imagine it's uh, starting to get a little bit cold for your taste, huh? <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, it's, I mean, like when I first moved here, it was like a shock to go from like, oh, the high, like the lowest you would get is maybe like 50 degrees, maybe <laughs> probably 60, like low 60s. You come here, I got here in wintertime, December. It was like, I don't know, it was snowing outside. I was like, what is this madness? What is this mad? Can I eat this? Is this food? No, it's not food. Okay, then what is this for then? <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was very much a, a jarring experience. Still is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I imagine so. All right. Well, um, so I'm definitely looking forward to hearing some some of your stories, as I've mentioned. So let's just uh, go back in time here. And I guess, uh, you know, maybe just take us back to the time you were growing up in Cameroon. And could you just kind of tell us, 
you know, what was it? You know, what was it that actually inspired you to embark on this path of world travel and adventure? Um, well, so, I mean, growing up in Cameroon, I grew up in a small village town. <clears throat> and um, I, I mean, I didn't know much about the world, to be honest. Like, I mean, I was a kid. That was, the, I was the, the, one of my most exciting memories as a kid was going to my mom and, and, and telling her that, Mom, I saw a two-story building today. She's like, what? I'm like, I saw a two-story building for the first time. I was so excited to see a two-story building. And, um, and so from that, she, I mean, my mom went to school in the U.S. in Minnesota. And so she was the reason why I came here because she had already been here before. And then she was pregnant with me in America. But then my dad said that he didn't want me to be born in America. So he, my dad made her come back home to Cameroon to have me be born there. Um, so when I moved back to Cameroon, when my mom moved back to Cameroon, I was born in Cameroon and then raised for, for just nine and came back over here. And, you know, I went to school. I mean, I didn't travel until like a few years ago for the first time. Um, I think it was 2015 was my first time traveling, I think, to Belize. Um, Love the country. One of my favorite countries in the world. And since then, I've just been like out and about adventuring, loving the world. All right. Right on. So in that case, let's go ahead and talk about, you know, some of your, your early travel memories. I mean, you know, once you, you know, see this uh, two story building and you kind of just get hooked to, and become curious to go see more of the world, you know, where did you uh, decide to go first? Like, you know, once you decided to make the leap um, out to go outside of Cameroon, you know, where, where did you take, uh, where did that take you first? And, you know, what were some of your early travel memories? So, like I said, like my mom was the reason why I came here. So I wasn't the one that particularly came, chose to come here. Um, she she brought me here, but then after, you know, I started traveling on my own. I mean, my first country was Belize and Guatemala. I mean, mm. Belize is like really it's amazing country. It's so beautiful, and I mean, of course, there's the ruins there. There's um, the beaches are amazing. I love San. Um, I think I can't remember the name. Not San. One of the one of the places that one of the islands. Um, like we rented a golf cart the whole time, just cruised around. It was just, it was very nice. Um, and there's ATM caves in Belize where if you like to see like skeletons and like learn history of the Mayan culture and, and see a bunch of like old dead people's skeletons, it's still all in the exact same place where they got killed. So like you can go see it in um, Belize in the, 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 the um, ATM caves. From there, um, I think my next trip was into um, Puerto Rico, which is, I mean, part of America, but it was still very fun going there. And then following Puerto Rico, I, I went to Costa Rica. Then, of course, Europe. I mean, everyone goes there, casual trip to Europe, um, Mexico, um, Costa and um, Colombia, Turkey. So it's just been just, I've been just doing whatever, you know. When I went to Iceland. I missed a few flights. I had one to Norway. I missed that flight. I had one to Taiwan. I missed that flight. So it's like, I made a few flights. I missed a few as well, but uh, I just having a great time. <laughs> All right, right on. So kind of, uh, you know, leaving Ca uh, Cameroon and, you know, going to uh, Central America like you did uh, on your own, you know, kind of like upon arrival, what were kind of some of your thoughts and first impressions? You know, you're kind of, you're, you're immersed with a, an entirely different culture from the one that you had uh, mostly grown up in. And, you know, would I say, what I dare say, like, was maybe culture shock, something that you had faced when you, you know, ventured out there uh, on your own? Or were you kind of able to sort of just, I guess I'll say, hit the ground running, uh, so to speak? Uh, what was that experience like for you? Um, I mean, yeah, I think the only culture shock I really ever had was coming to America. Mm -hmm. um, after that, everything else to me was just, you know, kosher. Like, I mean, Central America, people are there so welcoming and um, are so loving and whatnot. So it felt like home to me, honestly. And so honestly, the only culture I ever had was just America. That was the only one that was like really different. Other than that, everything else was just like family and friends and just great people around me all the time. Like Colombia, I have a friend who's in Colombia. So when I go to Colombia, I'm seeing a friend there and I'm, we're hanging out. He's taking me around the country. We're we're going to climb some mountains. We're going to, you know, just hang out for a few days. We're going to go eat some delicious Colombian food for a very good price of $2 per meal. You know, we're going to have a great time. You know, if I'm going to Turkey, I have friends in Turkey. I'm going to go see my Turkish friends. We're going to eat some delicious um, um, fish sandwiches for the, high, the good price of 50 cents. So it's like, you know, we're, we're I, I don't travel just to go, just to travel. I travel to go see people that I like seeing. So everywhere in the world, I have friends, almost basically. 
So I could just, you know, I have friends in Turkey, I have friends in Colombia, I have friends in the Netherlands. Like, it's just, uh, it's, I, I just, I always, I, I, that's the only reason I travel for is to see my friends. I don't like traveling just by myself. I don't see the, I don't find that to be as fun. I used to, but not anymore. Yeah, you know, you, you kind of just made me think of something. You were kind of talking about how, you know, these countries that you visited, especially in Central America, where, you know, it seemed like people were very friendly, very welcoming. You know, I kind of experienced that myself, um, you know, as I have mentioned to you earlier, when I was a Peace Corps volunteer uh, in the Gambia, I, I noticed that the communities there, especially the community that I lived in, was very tight knit. Like this was uh, the type of community that, you you basically are you can walk into like your neighbor's house pretty much without knocking and then they'll just be like oh yeah hey come on in like you know come have lunch with us uh, would you say was that kind of uh, similar to like your upbringing uh, in Cameroon and maybe that's what kind of sort of uh, I, I guess I'll say created that familiarity when you kind of travel to some of these other places um, yeah I mean in Cameroon you're not raised by your parents you're raised by the whole village it's mm-hmm. like you're not you know. <laughs> You're not a, you, everyone can beat you. Like in Cameroon, you know, we still hit the kids. So everyone can hit you, not just your parents. The neighbors can hit you. The, the teachers can hit you. The priests can hit you. So it's like, it sucks because you can't get away from anybody. Everyone can hit you. It really sucks because like, if you misbehave at home or away from home, you're still treated like you're at home anyway. And I really didn't like that about it because it was like, I like to do bad things and it sucks, but I can't do bad things because I'm always going to get, you know, beat it, beat. And then if the neighbor hits you, they call your parents, they don't call like with a phone because I don't remember having a phone, but they would let your parents know that they beat you. So then you go home and your parents beat you too for the, the fact that they never had to beat you. Now you're over here and getting hit twice for the same, the same mistake. It's just, it's, but yes, it's the same thing. It's very fun. Um, and I really, enjoy, yeah, in Cameroon, like our neighbor was always at the house hanging out and it just was super casual. We're all just like a huge community of really good friends and, you know, there's no locked doors. I don't remember anyway. There are some, but those people are not that fun anyway. So who wants to see them? Yeah, I think that was, um, that was in a bit of an interesting uh, adjustment for me. And I, I remembered, um, I, I was given my own kind of square hut when I was in my village uh, in the Gambia. And I just kind of remembered, uh, I kind of had to set boundaries pretty high. You know, with me being American, we're kind of used to just sort of having uh, our own space, right? So it's just, uh, I had to be kind of careful who I let in through the door because then they would expect it, you know, kind of more or less uh, to come in like all the time. And if I wanted like, you know, just to, just to be left alone and have my privacy, you know, it was a little bit uh, difficult. But at the same time, though, I still kind of really liked that about just just how tight knit the community was that, you know, if you had a problem, you had an issue, there was tons of people there that were willing to, you know, help you out. So, I mean, sure, it was probably tough, you know, as a kid growing up there, I'm sure, sure as you've mentioned, where anyone can beat you if you step out of line. But at the same time, <laughs> yeah. though, if you were also in trouble, everyone else like, you know, there is willing to step up uh, and help you too. Of course. So that, that's, that's pretty cool. All right. Yeah, well, it's nice. Yeah. So like, uh, what I want to ask you about next is some of the key highlights, uh, from your adventures. You kind of told us a little bit about what you've experienced, uh, in Belize and in other parts of uh, Central America. And you briefly, uh, touched on Europe and, and I'm, I'm sure we're not going to get into everything in this conversation, especially considering uh, all the places you've been to, but are there any key highlights from your adventures that really kind of stand out in your mind with, uh, that just, seem very memorable just something that you look back on with and have very fond memories of uh well i very much enjoy portugal i've never felt it's it's like having the third world you know community experience in a first world country or a seemingly first world country people there are so friendly and so welcoming and just so loving and and, and it's just like it was so much fun i i'm honestly still considering moving there for a few months at least i mean a year or two Cause it's just like such a fun vibe and environment and everyone's friendly. Everyone's cool. And, uh, you know, like we would go to a bar next door to the, the Airbnb I was staying at. And the guy would be like, Hey dude, like if you want me to serve you, I'm happy to serve you. You want to serve yourself. You're welcome to come behind the bar and serve yourself and just let me know whatever you take. And I'll, you know, and pay for it. And then that's it. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, just, you know, just keep track of yourself or whatever, you know? And I'm like, cool. Like, thanks man. I appreciate it. And it was like every day we would just go to the same bar and he was the same, same guy. Just, he leaves his work and comes to the bar and we're all hanging out and just, just a good time. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, I very much, obviously, Costa Rica is amazing. The diversity in environments is really cool. And just the overall country like vibe is just, everyone's just chilling. Like it's just not that serious. Life is just, just a good time there. 
I stayed at this um, treehouse community in Costa Rica. And so that was really fun. Like a whole community of tree houses. Um, yeah. So those are my two, I think, other than the fact that Iceland didn't have sunsets, that was weird too. But other than that, like, yeah, that's my two favorite places were Costa Rica and um, Portugal. Okay, cool. Now, when you were in Portugal, were you, um, was this bar that you were just talking about, was that in Lisbon or is that in, in a different part of the country? It was Lis- Lisbon, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, because um, that Lisbon was actually the only place in Portugal that I've been to. I was there on a 24-hour layover. And I, I remember this particular city just because of how close the airport was to just basically the city in general. Because you know how in like yeah. most like cities you fly to, um, you know, it's kind of hard to leave the airport to go and explore the city because that usually involves like a 30 minute train ride. But here you step out of the airport and you literally walk into a (laughs) residential area. But um, what I remembered uh, pretty uh, fondly of though from from Lisbon was kind of getting up into the communities or the, uh, I guess it, it was like a residential area that was kind of up on like the hillside that overlooks the entire city. And I just remember mm-hmm. just walking okay. literally upstairs to, to, uh, to get up, to get there. Like, did you by chance get up and explore like that? I didn't get sure up there. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't make it up there. I kind of just, um, stayed in the, like the downtown area. Um, and I also went out to like the, the Buddhist temple for some, some, some light meditation, but I just, I didn't really go up that direction. Gotcha. Okay. So, but I'm sure all in due time, you know, if you find your way back there to live there for a bit, you know, I'm sure you'll get to see more of the city. So right on, but now. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, so even though those were some of the highlights um, from your adventures, another thing that I like to ask my guests about is misadventures, or maybe I would even say embarrassing moments from our uh, travels as well, because you know, I think we all have them. And I think sometimes in like the world of social media nowadays, we kind of like to talk about the highlights more than anything else. But, you know, me personally, I, I kind of find that the misadventures usually kind of make the best stories. Um, at least that's for me personally. <laughs> but, but, um, but I was hoping if I may also ask you, like, uh, do you have any misadventures, potentially embarrassing moments uh, from your travels that, you know, kind of stand out in your mind too? I'm trying to think of one. Um, I have a, a, a thing, a feature in my mind where I forget things I don't like. And so I, I have really bad memory for things that are not pleasant, but I know Fair one enough. of them was missing a flight because I remember in Iceland, you know, we were at this, we were watching the sunset and the sun doesn't set in the summertime in Iceland. So we were watching like the sun dip because it gets really close to the edge and then it goes right back up. And so we we're watching that. And then we went out, I think to the bar and, and it was still, the bar opens like five o'clock in the morning. So we were out there partying all freaking morning. I had a flight that day at like seven o'clock. And so I'm like, let me party all day. And I'll go catch this flight. And then I was like, I left the bar. I was like, let me take a little nap. I was like, I'm going to take a nap. I woke up. I'm like, okay, now I have 40 minutes for the, to catch a flight. I have to drive all the way to the airport, which is like a 20 minute at least drive from the city. Drove there, returned my rental car. And then, um, Try to catch a flight and I missed it by like two minutes. I was like, oh, no. So I like, and the flight was to like Ireland and I was going to go to Ireland and ch- hang up. But I was like, whatever, back to the club anyways. Who cares? So I went back and I kept partying. It was a great time. Um, which other ones? Yeah, I, I, ha- I have yet to experience being that far north and actually experiencing the phenomenon of the sun actually never really, really setting. Um, well, you know, I, I told you that I had lived in England for a while. So obviously I had to, I dealt with, um, you know, really long, like su- summer days where like mm-hmm. I can still wear sunglasses at 10 o'clock in the evening, <laughs> but yeah, have, that's cool. Yeah. And, uh, but then of course, then when winter rolled around, like the sun setting at like four o'clock and, you know, I just feel like, you know, it's like vampire season <laughs> or something like that. So I guess uh, now, how long were you were you in Iceland for, uh, for for that trip, and was that something that you were able to kind of adjust to? Um, yeah, I mean, we have blackout curtains, so you know mm. it's not too bad. But yeah, I was there for a week. I mean, Iceland is so expensive. A week after about a week, your banks have to really wonder what are you doing there because right. I mean, every single meal if you're eating out will cost at least twenty dollars, at least, and it's not even good food. It tastes terrible. They have horrible tastes in food, not because they do, but because it's an island, so that's to import everything. Nothing grows in Iceland, so like their food options are just ugh. Yeah, that's certainly one thing I noticed. Um, you know, being in Reykjavik was just how expensive everything was. I mean, well, especially when it came to the food, I, I felt that 
you know, like lodging was fairly normal for, for, for the most part. Like maybe like if you uh, typically stay at hostels, the hostels might be a little bit more costly. Hotels seem to be mm-hmm. kind of just like about the same. But yeah, most of your budget is going to go to, you know, just feeding yourself. Because uh, yeah, I, I didn't even think about that. Like just in the countryside of Iceland, there's not really much that could really be grown there, is there? <laughs> nothing grows there. Like, that's it. Other than like, like algae, I guess. Other than that, like they have nothing. <laughs> yeah so it's like pretty, we, it's pretty tragic yeah so, so did you kind of make your way uh like around that country uh like pretty well did you kind of just do like the the loop road maybe go to some of the fjords uh what did you do in iceland um i i, I did the the things in the southern part of the country i mean honestly like i was just i mean when i went there i was kind of like um trying to figure my life out so i wasn't you know doing too much of like the the long drives but i did i did the southern part of the country and i, I met some some friends there one from france one from colombia and we just hung out and had a great time and we you know we we try to have fun and um uh, but no i tried not to i didn't go too far up it was this is a long drive and i was like all oh, the most attractions are on the bottom anyway so i was like why go to the top when i'm really having fun here sure but i yeah. do want to go back soon my friend that lived in iceland he was like dude let's go back and visit again and have some fun. So I'm going to have to do that soon. Yeah. It seems to me like Iceland from like other people that I've spoken to that, that have been there, it seems to be like one of like the most revisited, revisited countries that I hear about, you know, it seems like a lot of times uh, some travelers, um, you know, when they'll, they'll go to one place and then they'll focus on just trying to see like other places instead to, you know, try to, you know, see more of the world. But Iceland seems to be one of those countries that, more people that I come across tend to talk about that they either have been back like a second or maybe multiple times, or they at least contemplate wanting to go back to again. I guess there just has to be some sort of magic about the place, I suppose. I don't know why then, because I figured it's because it's halfway to Europe. So it's like a good stopover. I didn't think it was because people actually like Iceland. I mean, it's it, obviously you can like it. It's a great country. Honestly, it's beautiful. It's unique. The people are very friendly. But I couldn't imagine that country being one that I'm like, I'm so excited to go back to like, I mean, I'm so excited to go back to Portugal. I'm like, I'm just like, I'll go back to Iceland, of course, I'll go back. But I'm like super excited about Portugal. Like, I'm just merely excited about Iceland just because eh, it's Iceland. <laughs> oh, right, right on. All right. Now, so you got to see a good amount of the world. You've covered a lot of ground um, as we've uh, just uh, alluded to. And I know that one of the skills that you kind of picked up throughout your travels and adventures is, you know, being able to travel a little bit light, kind of embracing more of a minimalistic style of uh, traveling, which certainly kind of set the framework, I'd imagine, for you starting a Hercleon, and we'll certainly get into that. But now traveling light, can you kind of take us through, you know, what does that look like for you? Like, um, how, how much are you carrying? Are you, is it maybe just like you have a carry on, maybe one checked bag? Uh, what does that look like for you? And how did you kind of come to embrace this more minimalistic uh, style of travel? Um, hmm. Well, I think I'm just so cheap that I just cannot fathom paying a, a, a fee to bring clothes with me anywhere. Yeah, um, yeah. um, that's yeah. the first step I feel like. Um, but for me, whenever I'm traveling, I usually have, uh, just a backpack, um, one of my, the Hercleon backpacks. And I have maybe like two Hercleon shirts. Well, now when I travel, I have like, yeah, two Hercleon shirts. I have like some of the underwear. I have some of the socks. And then I have my shoes I'm wearing and then my computer. And that's it. That, and maybe a pencil, a pen, and my credit card, my wallet, a water bottle if I can bring one with me. I think, honestly, it's, I, my backpack is just so light. Like this, the last Frontier for me was the underwear frontier but now that i just released some underwear i am set i am i am set like seriously i i, I travel with so few things now that i can be anywhere in the world for months at a time with like two shirts it's very nice yeah i imagine so because um i was eventually able to kind of whittle myself down to just what i could fit in a 40 liter bag and just uh put in the overhead bin um, on the airplane and just be good to go with that that's how i traveled to two weeks in Germany for Christmas and New Year. And, you know, sometimes it might be um, a little bit tricky if you go to, if you're going to like, let's say maybe a colder place where you probably might have to bring like a heavy jacket or something like that, but it's still very much a feasible thing, you know, even though if it may take um, a little bit of practice, but you know, it just, it feels like that there's something like liberating because, well, not only just, you know, you mentioned just the aspect of saving money, but it's just, 
sometimes it just becomes such a pain to you know, wait on your bag at the baggage claim when you've already just been tired of traveling all day and you got to wheel that stroller bag through the airport, through the subway, yeah. through the taxi station or whatever. But it's just, if you, all you have is something on your, your back and I don't know, it just feels so much better. Like, would you say that that's kind of like another, uh, you know, motivator for you to, to travel light? Um, yeah. I mean, obviously I, I, I don't like being bothered by, you know, effort um, in anything in life, much less of freaking luggage. But <laughs> right. I think, for me, like a safety thing too, like you travel to another country, one that could potentially be like not particularly safe. I mean, for sure, America is one of the least safe countries I, I've been to in the world. But like, you know, some other countries, I, I, I mean, I know how to walk around America. I'm not going to walk around, you know, like, you know, the, 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 the poor parts with a suitcase so they can tell I'm, you know, I'm not from here and rob me. But in other countries, I don't know which parts are the poor parts. I don't want to walk around with a suitcase and then, you know, get like, oh, he's, he's definitely, he got some money. Let's go rob that guy. No, why would I do that for? I have a backpack. No one knows I'm, I'm from out of town. Actually, they usually do know because I don't know. I'm a bigger guy. So usually when they see me, they're like, yeah, he's probably not from here. But um, yeah, so I, I think it's a safety thing. I don't want to, you know, bring attention to myself and I don't want to be inconvenienced. But if I did, hey, dude, it's such a hassle to carry like a luggage around the world because taxis, yeah, I get a taxi. You got like, where, where am I going to put this thing whenever I'm not, you know, like if I'm not at a ho- like hotel right away. How am I going to store it once I get to a hotel? Like, it's just a lot of effort. And I'm just not trying to do all that. I'm just trying to have a backpack. That's it. Nothing else. Yeah, that, that, that's an interesting point. You know, I haven't really heard of that being brought up as a safety, uh, you know, measure before. But that, that actually does make perfect sense because, like, those roller bags that you're kind of dragging, like, behind you. And, of course, you know, I'm not, you know, trying to knock anyone if, they, if that's how they, uh, they travel right now. You know, that's not what I'm, what I'm saying. But it definitely does... I think when a lot of people see that it's synonymous with a tourist, a traveler, or as you mentioned, someone who is not from there. So yeah, some dinner, you see that you think it's dinner. You're like, Hey, we're going to eat today. We're going <laughs> to eat good. This person got something we need. They got money. <laughs> they came all the way from their country to here because they have the money to afford that flight. So that means I'm going to eat some tonight. That's how they think. Yeah, but it, but if you're just carrying a backpack, you know, and again, like something about like uh, within the size of like 40 liters, and um, and I think I've seen some of uh, your Herculean uh, backpacks, which are you know pretty subtle backpacks too. You know, they're not like o- oversized or anything like that. They're not like 28 th- liters. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say they're not like those big like 70 liter Osprey packs that you're lugging no. around. It's definitely much more um, like smaller than that. Yeah, it, it, which will certainly draw like a lot less eyes in in your direction <laughs> if you're if you're walking around uh, with one of those instead. Uh, I even so. have a hat that I made that has a wallet built into it because I'm like super sketchy guy, and I have I put my money in my wallet in my hat so that way because no one steals a hat they steal your wallet they steal your phone but they don't steal your hat. So I have a, you know I have a decoy wallet and then I have my actual money and my card in my hat and so like no one's gonna, like I'm I'm good don't worry about me I'm, if we're going to another country together. I will have all my stuff going home. You might get robbed, but I'm not going to get robbed. But yeah, so that's kind of how I like to roll. Yeah. Okay. That, 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 that's cool. Wow. I, di- I didn't even think about that. That's, uh, that's pretty neat uh, for sure. So, all right. Well, well, cool. And so now this was kind of what sort of, uh, you know, set you down that path to uh, kind of uh, create a Herculeana in, in the first place. It's kind of traveling light. And as you mentioned, you're basically utilizing and, uh, you know, having much less, uh, you know, clothes that you're taking with you and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was cause I was in Iceland and I didn't have, like, I only brought a backpack of stuff with me and, and then my clothes are smelling bad about day two in. And I, it just kind of sucks to be in a country that's really nice and not, and having smelly clothes the whole time. Mm-hmm. And so, and I also didn't know where to find the laundry cause I just don't ask, I don't ask a lot of questions when I go places. So I was just like really inconvenienced by finding my clothes are smelly. And there was a club in Iceland that's super fun. I didn't want to like in Iceland, they dress really nice. Like you don't want to like go like smelling bad in Iceland. You won't, you just, it won't work out for you. So that was why I got started because I was in Iceland and I wanted to get like clothes that didn't smell bad anymore. Mm, okay, cool. So obviously you recognize that having smelly clothes, especially in a nice place uh, like Iceland would be a problem. So when you decided to actually kind of uh, turn Herculean into a business to address this problem, I guess, where did you actually uh, begin with that? Because obviously you're going to need to seek out like some unique solutions uh, to this problem. So where, where did you kind of start looking? So my first thought was that maybe I need a different backpack. I thought maybe if I make a backpack that separates the clean and the dirty clothes, mm. 
then that might fix a problem because I was thinking that maybe it was like some cause cross contamination between my dirty clothes and clean clothes. I was causing it, all of them to smell bad. So I made a backpack a while ago. Um, and that wasn't a solution obviously, because I mean, you still run out of clothes at some point. Right. So, um, I started doing material research and learning about all the different materials in the world. And um, one night, my friend had a date. Um, I used to have my room, older roommate had a date that lasted way too long. And I had nothing to do while his date was going on. And we were so loud and I just couldn't sleep. So I like researched materials that night. And I realized that you could put metals into sheets and, or, and shirts and fabric. And so I started doing, um, I started working on the shirt that we currently sell. And I have a new one that's actually coming out that allows me to make it for a cheaper price, but even with softer, more antibacterial, but somehow it's cheaper. So I'm excited to make the new one. It's going to be really nice. I mean, it's going to be some luck. Like, like right now, when anyone gets the shirt, they're like, wow, this is nice. But the next one, ooh, it's going to be real nice. So, I mean, yeah, I've just been having fun, honestly, just having fun playing with materials. All right. So it sounds like uh, we're in for a real treat then. Uh, right it's on. Really nice. Yeah. So, so getting going uh, with starting a Herculean, you know, what were some of the challenges uh, that, that you faced? Because I mean, you know, basically anyone who I know that is in business for themselves in some way, shape or form, it's never, seldomly is it ever like a smooth start going off. There's always a lot of uh, bumps in the road. So just what were some of the challenges that you faced kind of getting kicked off the ground? I imagine there was probably a lot of trial and error as you were maybe experimenting with different fabrics to try to get it to exactly how you wanted it. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, I, I mean, but the thing, I, I forget a lot of things that happened. So, but, and I also kind of enjoy challenges. So I don't really see my challenges, but to most people that would think it's a problem to me, I, I think it's okay. So I don't really remember a lot of things that were challenging to me other than the fact that it took a while to get the right material to get the right size, the fit, the cut, all that stuff. And then figuring out logistics problems was challenging. And of course, getting the, the funding for the first set of shirts and whatnot. So, I mean, all those, but then those to me were all fun and they were exciting to work on and play with. So it wasn't like a bad experience at all. Like right now it's more challenging than ever because of the fact that with COVID and everything, um, global logistics are just such a challenge. Sure. And productions yeah. are so much slower. Like, like my batches I made a while ago, it, it, before it took 60 to 90 days to make them, that takes 120 to 160 days to make them. Oh, wow. So it was like, oh, yeah, it's such a challenge to make things right now. Oh, yeah, gosh. And shipping I, prices have went up, gone up by a lot too. So it's just, yeah, it's, it's honestly a challenging experience for everybody. But I mean, I'm not complaining because I feel like no matter how challenging it gets, you know, it could be worse. We could be in a country that doesn't have, you know, as much resources to, to weather the storm. So Right. Yeah, I, I think that just really kind of just goes along with just being uh, flexible uh, and adaptable because it's like, I guess you, you kind of almost have to be ready for anything in you know, the realm of business because um, you, know, you kind of just talked about how supply chains uh, just got disrupted. Well, that could easily had just as happened even without a global pandemic uh, going on. You know, maybe your suppliers, maybe they they close or the owners of your certain suppliers, they decide, eh, I'm just going to hang it up, go do something else now. Now suddenly one of your uh, supply chains uh, just uh, got cut off. So what would you say has been kind of like, if you want to talk about maybe like a couple of, I guess I'd say character traits or I guess I'll just, or even key factors in general that kind of led you to be successful in business uh, like uh, th thus far. Uh, again, there could be quite a few of those, but maybe I'll just have you focus on like, maybe like three or something like that, that what kind of comes to mind that kind of led you to be successful thus far? I think the most important thing is like, um, like being taking responsibility for people's experiences in life. So I think entrepreneurship, a lot of times people think it's all about being selfish, but it's, it's typically the opposite. Like you are trying to help someone else have a better life experience. Mm -hmm. Like you go into business. Some people do go into business to make money, but if that's the, the main reason you go into business, you probably won't do very well in business because Business is about serving others. And um, so I, I don't know, like for me, I think my, my, my like desire to help as many people as possible is like a huge driver for me because I don't, I mean, I grew up so poor that I don't value money that much. Like I don't, I, I, you need it, of course, you can't just take money. It's an important resource in life, but you don't have to like value it to the point where like your whole life is built around more money. Um, so I think my, yeah, my desire to help people is the most important, you know, well, so my one is taking responsibility for people's, people's life problems and people's experiences and challenges. The two second is, um, being, um, wanting to serve others, you know, not putting, not, 
using money as your, your driver, but using service as a driver. Um, and the third is, I think, just, you know, um, like having fun, you know, like finding a way to make what you're doing, no matter how challenging it is, enjoyable. You know, if you can't take the effort, or you can't enjoy what you're doing somehow, then you're going to, it's going to be so hard and so challenging to get through this experience. Yeah, I'd imagine so. And I think what's interesting about, you know, doing a clothing line like you are doing now is, you know, you start off, you have like a vision in your mind of what you want, like this shirt or this hat or this backpack uh, to look like. But then once you actually kind of produce that tangible result and then, you know, maybe having to tweak it a few times, like as you get a prototype and you make adjustments as you go, I imagine that's got to be a pretty exciting thing just in its own right, just to kind of see, you know, your creation kind of sort of uh, come to life, so to speak. Uh, would that be uh, accurate? Yeah, I think it's a dual experience. It's both a, um exciting experience and also a terrifying one because now the exciting because people are wearing your stuff, people are buying your stuff. Like, I mean, like the other day, yesterday, my girlfriend and I spent hours, you know, shipping out 200 plus orders. Like, wow, it takes forever to fulfill all the orders. And we have more orders. We have almost another 100 orders to fill again today or tomorrow. But so it's a constant uphill and right now we're talking to some stores to put our products into a store. So it's just like you have a lot, but so that's, that's fun. That's the time sleep wearing your stuff and actually liking it. The challenges and the, the, the scary part is like, what if they don't like it? You know, what if everything you put your money into, they hate it and they all want their money back. What are you going to do about that? Like, so success is a two sided street. You're like, yeah, I'm so, and oh my God, I'm responsible now for all these things. People have to like and enjoy and want to, you know, have more of it. Yeah. It's, it's been very scary at the same time as it's been exciting. Yeah, I think that's kind of the tricky thing when we put ourselves out there or we put our creations out there. And sometimes I experience that uh, with this podcast too. I'm wondering if I like record an episode, especially when I do a solo episode, I'm thinking, is anyone going to resonate with this? Are they going to not like this? Are they going to think my story's boring or, or, or something along those lines? But I think I've kind of come to find is that, you know, ultimately we're not going to please everybody. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's just if we can serve as many people as we can, you know, even if it might be a smaller number than what we think we might've originally anticipated, I, I agree with you. It certainly uh, is uh, very much uh, worthwhile. And cause like, yeah, like it, what you were just kind of talking about with uh, you and your girlfriend having to ship out all the orders. And I've noticed that with a lot of other friends that I have that are, you know, entrepreneurs, especially those that, you know, either like build or sell or distribute physical merchandise like you are. It's like you're the customer service representative, you know, you're uh, shipping and uh, <laughs> receiving and, uh, you know, you're this and you're that. You basically got to wear like all these hats uh, to, to get it going. <laughs> so, yeah. And, I mean, and so I imagine, you, yeah, you, that's got to be uh, like pretty challenging, which, which by the way, I'm kind of going back here. When did you actually start Hercleon? I didn't even think to ask you that yet. 2017. Oh, 2017. So, yeah. okay. Yeah, no, I mean, it's like if you if you don't want to work too much, then entrepreneurship, a lot of people think entrepreneurship means you work less, but like that's not the case. Like you are working way more. Like sometimes I'm up at like three in the morning doing work. It's like you just, you're working a lot. And, and they're like, yeah, but at least you have the, like, the freedom to do what you want. Yeah, maybe. Not usually, but maybe you have a week vacation in every few months, maybe. Like, yeah, it, the, the benefits obviously are that you're working for yourself and whatnot, but working for yourself doesn't mean that you have magically are like less, you know, more free than before. Now, instead of having one boss, you have thousands of bosses that can, can email you and say, I hate what you're doing. Or I hate this product. And I want my money back. And like before you had one person to deal with, now you have a thousand people to deal with. And it's like, oh my gosh. I actually had a person email me about like, um, I don't know, she wasn't, she wasn't happy because we have a face mask. It's selling a lot and she wasn't happy because it like, it just was, I don't know why she wasn't happy. I just, I was like, honestly, like, you don't have to give me all this long story. I'll just give your money back. It's not a big deal. Like, it's okay. It's just a few dollars. We're not too upset about it. But I think she wanted a mask without a filter. And we, we clearly stated that there's a filter in our mask. So it's not like the most part used to the really cheap, you know, cotton ones that are just, that single layer of BS. And when you give them like a real high quality with a filter, they're like, oh, I can't breathe. And I'm like, I don't know how you can't breathe. I'm working. I do a full workout for an hour and 30 minutes with a mask on the whole time. <laughs> and you can't breathe I, while, work, while walking. Like, I don't understand how somehow my lungs, maybe because I'm Africa, my lungs are magically better than your lungs, but I don't know, whatever. It's okay. I'm not upset. 
Yes. So kind of going along with that, you just made me think of something. How do you d- discern between what like is actual like good customer feedback, like something that maybe you can implement to like improve your products or like improve um, either the customer service experience or something like that versus just straight like negativity. Like they, they just kind of, you just feel like they're just writing you just to berate you and nothing good constructs. Uh, like, are you able to kind of uh, discern between what's actually like feedback you can use versus what is just, you know, like I said, them trying to berate you. I mean, pretty simple most people that are giving you feedback are like they actually are like empathetic they're like you know and I, I mean i just want to you know let you know this is what i've experienced and hopefully you know you can make a change some people just want to be radio they're just they had a bad day or something and they've been they're hyped they're they're ready to go they're ready to go off on you and you're gonna take the l and it's like i'm like okay go ahead i want and you can tell because the first few the first like like sentence or two they're like really just like heated they're really warmed up so at that point, you just ignore the rest of whatever they're saying. Just ignore that part. And then just get to the end of whatever they want to get from you. It's like, like don't add the stress to your life. It's not worth it. I mean, I have thousands of customers that are all happy. I'm not going to just get upset about this one person that's just so unhappy. And it's like, how is it possible that thousands of people are happy what they're getting? And somehow you are the only one that, like, struggles. So you just got to cut your tent, take your L's and, and move on with life. Yeah, uh, de- definitely. Because you know, it, it's interesting with uh, like neg- negativity uh, like that, though. Too, as you've mentioned, you know, you get thousands of positive reviews, and you know that should feel really, really good. But then when you just get that one that's thrown in there for some reason, that just seems to be the one to like focus on too. And it's the same thing with me. Like most of the reviews I get, like on Apple Podcasts for my show, are quite positive. But then I'll just get like the one, like one star for someone who just just wants to say lots and lots of bad things about my show. I'm like, uh, okay, did you just really take time out of your day just so you can get <laughs> send negativity towards someone else, I guess, you know, but it, yeah, it, it, it just, just got to take it personally. Yeah. It's just ultimately like, like, like we just mentioned earlier is that we're not going to please everybody, but you know, we just do the best we can. And then, but fortunately, it sounds like for you, more people are resonating with uh, what you're putting out there and what you're created versus those who. Oh are yeah, coming, no, so. our our customer return rate is so high. Everyone's just they, I, like our shirt never gets returned. No one returns a shirt. No one returns a mask. Actually, that's not true because two people have returned, and one of them was because it was too small and we didn't have any more. And another lady, because she was hated, the lady that hated it hated it a lot. Like she really hated it. I was like, oh my gosh, oh, well. <laughs> Don't have me stop you. Here's your money, lady. You go have fun in life. I know you're a treat to be around. I bet everyone loves your company. You're so fun, I'm sure. At parties, you're probably great. Have fun. <laughs> nah, dude, you can't take it personally at all. Like, I used to take it super personally. Then I realized, like, the customers almost is always right. Unless they're wrong, then they're wrong. So, like, like sometimes, you know, I have customers that are like, this, this cannot be made of this material. There's no way. I'm like, how much do you know about materials? Have you ever used this material before? Do you know anything about this material? They're like, well, it feels wrong. And I'm like, how would you know if you felt right? Have you ever used this material before to know what right and wrong feels like? And they're like, well, it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't feel right. I'm like, dude, like, whatever. Sorry, ignore me. The guy that studies materials all the time. Ignore whatever I think. Your, your, your feelings are definitely the way to go. I trust your feelings way more. Than I trust the guy that actually knows what he's talking about. Completely support your view. Anyways, I, I'm joking, dude. I just like to... I, I have a good time. <laughs> okay, uh, right on. Yes, yeah, I, I like that we're getting um, a little bit of a laugh out of this, uh, even though I'm sure probably in the moment, like uh, reading emails and getting messages like that might not be the most pleasant thing. But if we can look back on them in hindsight and kind of just chuckle a little bit, I'd still say it's, it's, it's a bit of a win. So right yeah, on. Yeah, of course. So, so kind of let's uh, dial in a little bit more as to what you got available at uh, Hercleon uh, right now. You mentioned shirts, you know, masks. So, yeah, just kind of take us through uh, your inventory. What can uh, people expect? Yeah, we have the shirts, of course. We have the hats. We have a uh, bug spray called um, F off bug spray. Actually, I have some in here somewhere. Really? Um, but oh, cool. it's a bug spray called um, F U C K off. That's my bug spray. I thought, what a better name for a bug spray than to tell it to just F off. So um, I have that. I have the shirt. I have the underwear that's coming out, uh, I think, in uh, next month. Yeah, it's just it's a lot of good stuff, man. Just, having, just, just check it out, I guess, and you find out what's there. It's like a little surprise. 
All right, cool. Yeah, that that's that is actually a clever name for a bug spray because I'm sure we all pretty much say that uh, out yeah. loud when you know bugs, yes. mosquitoes, and uh, you know I told you I I live in uh, the southeast, so I got to deal with ticks just as well too. Which Ooh, I hate those, those are things. the worst. Hate those yeah, things. The worst. Oh gosh. So, all right, right on. So, like, uh, what what's next for you? Um, what do you kind of see for yourself, like going into the future? What do you kind of envision for the company? Or maybe, um, you know, you getting out back into the world again, you mentioned Portugal. What do you kind of see on the horizon for yourself? Um, well, Turkey is looking like my friends are all trying to get me to go, go back to Turkey and hang out with them. So I might go to Turkey. Um, I'm, I have the under, underwear that's coming out soon here. That's going to be released in a little bit here. Um, what else? Mm, yeah, I mean, and of course, the bed sheets are doing well. So I'm just, I'm also just going to keep having fun. I might move to another country next year just to have to diversify my life experience because I mean being only 26 years old I don't want to like get comfortable too soon I mean I live in Minnesota the land of being comfortable so like I don't want to you know like it's just it's too soon I need to go do other stuff in my life before I come back here if I do come back here I might go I might actually live in Africa for the rest of my life but we'll find out when I get there all right. Well, you know, the, yeah, the world is uh, wide open. And, you know, fortunately, it seems like uh, lately more and more places are kind of opening up, you know, for to travel to. And I do believe, uh, you know, Turkey, I think, is now accepting uh, people from the U.S. again. So because as you yeah. can tell, I, I've been, you know, looking, <laughs> looking and doing like a Euro trip myself here uh, pretty soon as well. So, yeah, I'm constantly checking to see. Yeah, I think everyone's in the mood for it. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Everyone's trying to travel now. And we we have the, the the best clothing for traveling, so we're in a great place. Whenever we get around to traveling, we're gonna be like, "Hey, I know you've missed us. Come on, come on, go ahead, get something nice for yourself. Come on, Hershey, on. We have the clothes ready for you." Well, and then you you also got the high quality mask too. I mean, if you gotta you know spend a, a good like hours on a plane wearing a mask, you might as well get yourself a good one, right? Oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I I mean, I actually made. My granddad has hearing aid, and so he like he like complained to me about the mask, like the ear, the ear mask, because like it hurts my ear. So I made like the behind the neck uh, mask that's adjustable and whatnot, and like just oh, for really? him. But I realized on my travel, my trip, that like God, my ear hurts after about an hour on a flight with a mask on. So I, I, I I'm happy I made the one for my granddad because now like the behind the ear is my favorite, the behind the neck one, my favorite one because it's I can wear it for hours and be comfortable. The behind the ear thing, my ear hurts, man. Like it wasn't made for holding a, a mask on your face. Right. Yeah, I gotcha. So almost yeah, makes so you kind of nice. wonder like how like hospital staff wear those just wrap behind like you oh, know, the ear mask God. for long That's shifts or, or time in hours. the surgery room. That's hours. I feel bad for them. Like that has to suck. <laughs> I would actually cry doing that. <laughs> well, my brother's a doctor. I'm going to ask him how he does it. All right. Well, 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 cool. So it sounds like, you know, good innovation you got going on there. Right on. All right. Well, so we are kind of starting to draw near the end of our time. So kind of get into the wrap up of our conversation. Uh, one thing that I always ask my guests to do is to issue a challenge uh, to our listeners, you know, because we've, uh, you know, we, we talked about a lot of cool things that in this conversation. We got to hear some of your travel stories and we got to talk a little bit about you know business, entrepreneurship, and a little bit of uh, life lessons mixed in there too. But you know, all that can only take our listeners uh, so far. They themselves have to follow it up with action once they're done listening to this conversation to go out and pursue like meaningful things uh, in their life. So, what I'd like to ask you is, what challenge would you issue to our listeners for them to go out there and start living a more adventurous life? Um, I guess I would say that. It more, the most um, impactful investment I've ever made in my life has been to invest in getting to know myself better. And so, contact, so if your question is how to go out there and adventure more, I think they should go inside and adventure more inside. And then by doing that, they're going to you know, be in a better place to go adventure out in the world. So I think investing in, in self you know, um, exploration and um, and understanding and, and, and really learn about who you are, what you like, what like, cause I heard a quote once before it goes, you're not who you think you are. You're not who your friends think you are. You're who you think your friends think you are. And if you, if you don't know who you are until you, you really get out of that situation and really find out who am I. And so I think that's the most important thing a person can do is like investing in, in like figuring out who are they. And in, in that investment, you will realize if you actually do want to travel the world, sometimes you might not want to travel the world. Maybe that's what everyone's doing it. Maybe you, don't, maybe you actually don't care about traveling the world. 
I learned that I didn't actually like traveling. I learned that I like seeing my friends more. I like traveling. So I stopped traveling by myself. Um, maybe you learn that, I don't know. I mean, there's so much you can learn. So I think it's important just to ask yourself, who, are, who am I? And in that answer, then, you know, you can go from there and then see if traveling is really for, meant for you or not. Okay. All right. Right on. And I, I think that's probably a first, you know, to, to come up like uh, on this podcast when, you know, kind of just, you know, doing that more self-discovery, you know, kind of finding out like uh, who you are and I guess really what it is you want. Maybe it is going out and seeking adventure. I mean, I think maybe we have that all within us to some degree, but then maybe it might be doing something entirely different. So yeah, yeah I guess like what are your values? What yeah, do you value? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. That. Yeah. Honing in on that. So all right, right on, man. All right, so what I have for you next is what I call my final three. These are three questions that I ask all my guests uh, at the end of the show, wrapping up. And I like to think that they're fun, but you know that could be uh, subjective. But I'm going to go ahead and ask you these questions now. And the first of these questions is, what is your favorite place that you've been to so far? Mm. Oof, that's a terrible question. Um, <laughs> I guess, oh my gosh, holistically, I would say Portugal. Okay. Yeah. All right. And uh, the next question, what is one thing on your bucket list that you have yet to do? Yikes. God, it's a terrible question. I've already done everything. Um, <laughs> I don't have a bucket list. That's the first thing. So there's that. Um, I've done everything. I don't know what I have not done yet. <laughs> Oof. I, I honestly don't know. I've done, I've, I've, done, I've done everything. I've already been bungee jumping. I've already been on the water. I've already done skydiving by myself. Okay, let's say um, get a motorcycle license. I'll say that because I don't have one of those yet. Okay, all right. Well, that would definitely be a unique way to go out and explore, you know, on motorcycle. Yeah. So, all right, cool, cool. I could dig it. Yeah, and yeah, yeah yet another first that's like uh, that's come up on the podcast. So, right on. Which one? Uh, the, the motorcycle. Like no one's talked about getting a motorcycle uh, yeah, yeah, license yeah. as a bucket list item uh, before. So, what do they usually say? Well, you know, they're normally they'll list off like a country that they haven't been to oh, or, yeah. or, or yeah, some sort of like extreme activity like skydiving or bungee jumping or something like that. They've but if you've, already, things so if you've already like ago. racked up those on the list, then yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, the know, real actually, fun happens when you do it by yourself. Go, go solo, solo skydiving is so much more fun than when someone else is holding you back. Oh, oh really? So yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause actually, you know, I, I think, um, I think I've seen something on, uh, it might've been on your Instagram or it might've been on YouTube of like footage of you uh, skydiving. Uh, did you do it in North Florida in the panhandle? I did one in North Florida. I did one um, in, in Wisconsin. Okay. Yeah. Cause I, I think um, I, I recognized uh, when you were uh, jumping tandem in North Florida, like uh the the same guy that was uh, doing you were doing tandem <laughs> with was the same guy that I did tandem with because I told you I live in the Florida Panhandle myself so yeah so yeah, so, so I went there and I'm thinking oh wow man it's a uh, I guess he's a, a popular guy he's a very popular guy yeah he's yeah, a very so, friendly one too yeah so so yeah cool and yeah skydiving was a really cool experience and I definitely recommend it for for anyone I mean if you if you think you're afraid you're afraid of skydiving it's like just get out of the plane. And once you get out of the plane, That's it. you're good to go. The fear is gone. The, the fear is gone. There's no fear left. Yeah. It, well, it's, it's all like adrenaline and <laughs> everything else. And then you go right to bed afterwards. You're so tired. You, wanna, you need to go to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. That was an interesting like feeling, just the adrenaline dump uh, afterwards. So yeah, I know exactly what you were, <laughs> what you're referring to. So cool, man. All right. And uh, the last question, and this is a two-parter. What is your favorite animal and have you seen this animal in the wild? Um, I don't have a favorite animal, but if I were to, I automatically have some, I think giraffe. I don't know why I thought giraffe, but let's say my favorite animal is a giraffe. Um, I know I've never seen one before. Okay. Well, all in due time, I'm sure. You know, what, what, might that actually be another bucket list item that you'll add? No, because I don't have lists. I don't keep track. I just, here's my, my theory on life. It's like, Wherever it takes me, I go. I don't, I, don't, I don't have my own desire. I don't have desires for myself. I have no goals. I have no ambition. I just do stuff. So like, if it happens, if it happens, if it doesn't happen, I, I'm not forcing anything in life. I just go, I just go with the flow. Let's go. I try things. I, here's my theory. I knock this door. If it doesn't work, I go to the next door. I keep knocking, and I, I'm like walking, and I have no idea where I'm going. I'm so confused and so lost, and I just keep doing that, and it keeps working out. Okay. All right. Right on, man. 
All right. So, well, before we uh, close out here, uh, let's just, uh, you know, recap uh, really quick. Uh, you know, where can our listeners uh, go to uh, connect with you? Where can they, uh, you know, find your products at Hercleon? And where can they connect with you on maybe like social media or in other places out there in the internet space? Uh, how, can we, how can we find you, man? Well, so the easiest, I guess, would be um, hercleon.com. You can find most of my things on there. If you subscribe to the, like, the newsletter, you will get like, updates on like, new products I'm making or whatever we're doing. Um, finding me personally, I guess you can go to like, Instagram and at Wenizzi, W-E-N-I-Z-Z-Y, and you can find me there. Um, I'm usually just, I don't post actual posts. I just post story posts when I feel like it. So, yeah, those are the two ways you can get, get a hold of me, I guess. All right. Well, I'll get those uh, linked up in the show notes for this episode so the listeners can go and find them there. All right. Well, hey, Wen, um, I want to thank you very much for taking the time for, for joining me today. And I also want to thank you for your patience. I know you and I had to sort out some uh-huh. technical difficulties as we were yeah, trying to all good, all good. Yeah, record this uh, conversation. But, you know, I really appreciate you being here. You know, it was great to you know hear about your story and also just to kind of get some insight from you as to how you're going about being successful in your own business and your own life. So, yeah, you know, just thanks so much for being here and sharing all this with myself and the well, listeners. Thanks for having me. Great. I appreciate it. It's been really fun. All right. Right on, man. Well, there you have it, everyone. Another awesome episode of the All Around Adventure podcast is in the books. I really hope you enjoyed my conversation with Wen today. I know I had a great time chatting with him, and I definitely encourage you all to go connect with him over on Instagram and go check out some of the amazing products that he has over at Hercleon. And you can find links to both of those in the show notes for this episode. If you did enjoy today's episode of the All Around Adventure podcast, make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you might be listening to it. This is a weekly show. We got a brand new episode coming at you every single Monday. So make sure you're subscribed so that way you don't miss a single episode. Also, if you'd like to support the podcast and help us grow, you can share this episode with a friend or family member who you think might also enjoy it. And you can also head over to Apple Podcasts, leave us a five-star rating and review. That'll get us trending higher so that way more people can find this podcast and get some value from it as well. And you can find the link to where you can leave your rating and review in the show notes for this episode. Also, this podcast is just one of a few free resources that we offer at All Around Adventure. Another free resource that we have is our private Facebook group called Travel Titans. It's a group that was created for travelers to share their stories, their tips and advice, as well as their inspiration pertaining to both travel and self-development. If you think that's something that you'd like to be a part of, you can head over to facebook.com slash groups slash Travel Titans, and we look forward to seeing you there. And the last thing that I have to share before I close out here, again, I just want to thank you so much for being here today. I know you're busy. I know you got a lot going on, but it just means so much to me that you chose to download and listen to this podcast and hear what I had to say today and also what my guest Wen had to share. And I greatly appreciate it. And I certainly don't take it for granted. And that's all I have to say for now. And I'll be back next Monday with a brand new episode of Travel Reflections, which is my solo show. So be sure to check back in. But until then, I'm Josh Guerrero saying be safe, happy travels, and always move forward.